Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there is something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below and we'll do it for you. A big shout out to the person that suggested this and a big shout out to um, everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far. Thank you very much. And check out our second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse, our podcast Devin in with Funny and Jesse, our Patreon Funny and Jesse. You can find the links in the description box. So without wasting time, today we're going to be reacting to in defense of the beautiful character of Prophet Muhammad Shamsi. Without wasting time, let's get into the video. Bismillah, go for it. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulullah. The meaning of it, this uh, state of what I've just said, in the name of Allah, and all praise is due to Allah, and we send the salutation, and we ask Allah to bless the Prophet This book, as uh, uh, I've mentioned previously, that I want to go through some chapters because there's mashallah, very, very nice chapters in this book. The whole book is very good, Lama Mabarak. It was written by Abu Ayyad Amr Rafiq. And uh, if you are interested to buy the book, uh, not to buy it, sorry, because Alhamdulillah will give you for free. Uh, so Alhamdulillah, we have many da'wah stores uh, all over uh, Britain or uh, England. There's one in London, West London, called CC Dawa. You can even go check it on Twitter page or the brother will put the link for you. So if you're from uh, Leeds or Bradford or Birmingham or from uh, Cardiff, even if you're from America or Australia or Norway, so we have all these Dawa stores. So go there. If you're from around there, check them, follow them. Sometimes they go around the country. Maybe they come to your area, then get in contact with them and you will have one for free, you, for the Muslims and the non-Muslims. So he mentions here a nice title, Muslim and the non-Muslim relations. Okay? So he mentions here, the Quran outlined, uh, outlined, the Quran has outlined the base rule concerning the relationship between the Muslim and the non-Muslims, who do not fight the Muslims on account of their religion and not expel Muslims from their homes. Allah Azza wa Jal said, Surah Al-Mumtahina, لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلوكم في الدين ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروهم وتقسطوا إليهم إن الله أن تبروهم وتقسطوا إليهم إن الله يحب المقسطين Allah doesn't not forbid you to deal justly and kindly with those who never fought against you because of your religion and never took you out from your houses Allah this verse is so clear for everyone except for Islamic haters who hate Islam so much and they will reject anything if, even if the truth is so clear. So here, our Ustad, our Iyad, mentioned classic scholars, Salafi scholars. Ibn Kathir, Ibn Kathir, may Allah have mercy upon him, stated in his tafsir, meaning that you are benevolent towards them and deal justly with them. Imam Abdul Rahman al Saadi, one of the Salafi scholars, mentioned the meaning of the verse. He's from the modern, uh, from scholars of our time. He mentioned, Allah does not prohibit you from benevolent conduct, good ties, returning goodness, and behaving with justice toward the polytheists, from those who are relatives and other than them, where they do not fight you for your religion and not expel you from your homes. So Ibn Kathir, again, Ibn Kathir, who some Islamic haters out there lying against him, he mentions he bring number of narrations from Asma, may Allah be pleased with her, that the daughter of Abu Bakr Siddiq, her mother was a pagan, so when she was in Medina, she came to visit her daughter, okay, Asma. So she came to the message of Rasulullah and she told him, my mother, she's a polytheist, and she came to Medina. He said, be good to her. Be good to her. Uh, now, likewise, the, the treaty with Quraysh, Rasulullah made a treaty with Quraysh. That's why when they broke the treaty, Allah mentioned, so tell that you fight them because they broke the treaty and they are killing the Muslims. So you fight them whenever you find them. But this verse doesn't speak about every polytheist. Because in the same chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala categorized the other polytheists who keep 
the contract with the Muslims, who doesn't want to harm the Muslims to be good to them. Ibn Jair Tabari mentioned uh, another scholar, Salafi scholar, in his explanation of the Quran, that the first meaning of the verse, that this verse was particular only to those Muslims who were, who were resident in Mecca, but had not yet migrated to Al Medina. Second, that this verse relates to the people outside of Mecca who had not migrated to Al Medina. He mentioned many verses, but he said the correct one, this verse is a general, comprises everyone. The, mo the most correct of this saying is a statement of the one who said that what is meant by Allah uh, does not forbid you to deal justly and kindly with those who fought not against you on account of religion, is that it pertains to all of the factions from the different beliefs and religions, that you behave good toward them and that, that you are just regarding them. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala generalized with his saying, those who fought not. So this verse, not just speak about people of the book, speaks about every non-Muslim who does not fight us and try to harm us or take us because of our religion and take us out from our houses. So these verses, you never hear, or this quote from Ibn Kathir and the scholars, Ibn Jair Tabari, you will never hear the, the, the Islamic haters quote this uh, quotation because it clearly go against their desires and expose their lies. We'll finish this uh, clip with this statement, beautiful statement of one of uh, the scholars that have passed away, 20th century scholar, Muhammad Amin al-Shalqiti. May Allah have mercy upon him. He mentioned that in his tafsir, he mentioned the numerous views, including the viewpoint that this verse was abrogated and proceeds to provide historical and textual evidences to refute this claim. Mentioning one. So now Shafiq is saying why, as for those who say this verse abrogated about the, uh, 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 with the proofs, because not because one scholar or two scholars said something is abrogated, we have to follow them. No, you have to give a proof. So now it's going to bring proofs why those verses have not been abrogated. The verse to deal kindly with the, the disbelievers or to not force no one to become a Muslim. So he mentioned one statement of a Tabari and Imam Shafi'i, after which he said, this view that has been deemed correct by Ibn Jair Tabari, and which authenticated by Shafi'i, is that which is necessitated, necessita necessitated by spirit of Islamic legislation. So Shafi'i and Tabari, may Allah have mercy upon them, both of them agree that this verse has not been abrogated to deal kindly and justly with those who never fought against us because of our religion. Rather, mentioned that is the spirit of the Islamic legislation. Second uh, reason why it has not been abrogated. The, benevol the benevolence of the Prophet Sallallahu towards specific non-Muslims, such as Thumama. Thumama, he was coming to kill the Messenger of Allah He was planning to kill the Messenger of Allah in Medina. He was coming from outside Medina. While he was outside Medina, some companions were outside, trolling outside Medina, they caught him. But they never knew he, who he was. So they brought him to the masjid. The messenger of Islam came inside the masjid. He said, do you know who is this guy? He said, no. He said, this is Thumam. Okay? So the messenger of Islam, so this uh, Thumam, he came to kill the messenger of Islam. So the Prophet Islam came to him. He said, what, is, what do you have? He said, if you kill me, then you have taken your revenge. Because Thumam killed some companions before. And if you forgive me, you are a generous person. So Prophet ﷺ said, take care of him. Give him food, everything. F three days, Prophet ﷺ left him in the masjid, advised companions to take care of him. Prophet ﷺ killed him, said, what, you have to kill me? Let me cut off your hand. Your hand. Then Prophet ﷺ, third day, said, let him go free. So Muhammad left the masjid, he went, he took a balloon, he took shower, and he came back. He said, I bear witness, there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness, the Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah. So look at this beautiful story, which none of Islamic haters will mention that. The woman was in Medina, a man that he killed some of his companions, a man that he was planning, he was coming to kill him, but Allah eh, protected his Prophet Wasallam. What Prophet did to him? Treated him nicely, took care of him. So that's, that's the second reason, okay? Third one, the third reason, different de de delegations that came to, prophet, to the Prophet Wasallam in the knife year after the Hijra, this was after the chapter of Tawbah or when the source uh, Tawbah or chapter Tawbah was revealed. How the Messenger of Islam dealt with them? 
Okay, let us read. After Hijra, such as the Christians of Najran, okay, and the delegation of Tamim and others. With all of them, the Prophet Sallallahu was gentle, kind, and he was benevolent toward them. The fourth reason, the treatment of the Jews of Kaiba, who despite being, uh, uh, who, who broke the treaty and uh, uh, did many things which is evil, but Prophet Sallallahu he never killed them, okay? Then he, okay, then Shaqid is now, then Shaqid is said, he mentions of the other tribes, Prophet let them go free, but they always mention Bani Quraida, and there is, alhamdulillah, a video, I was speaking to this English guy, and I clarified this issue, but we will clarify it in another video. So he said, Imam Shaqid, he said, and in, uh, and in closing, that which makes this clear very strongly, he's speaking about, which makes it stronger and clearer that those verses to be kind and should not force no one to become Muslim or the other verse has not been abrogated with a verse of fighting, Allah's statement. And if they both, meaning your parents, strive to make you associate with me in worship, that of which you have no knowledge, then do not obey them, but accompany, uh, be good to them and accompany them in this life with goodness. This good behavior and benevolence is toward the one who strove to make a Muslim associate others with Allah and worship, but did not actually fight against the Muslims. Has the rights of the parents are to be given precedence, even if they are upon disbelief, and strive to lead one to disbelief. With this and other evidences, a shaqid invalidates the view of those who spoke with the abrogation of this verse. So, a shaqid, may Allah have mercy upon him. To summarize, he brings many proofs from the Quran and prophetic tradition to demolish and refutes the statement that those verses was abrogated. Likewise, Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned that in his Kitab al-Jawab Sahih. Ibn Taymiyyah, one of the imma, one of, one of the high authority in Islamic uh, 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 religion. May Allah have mercy upon him. He mentioned the same thing. He brought many points. One of the points he mentioned, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal maw'idati al-hasanati wa jadilhum billati ahsan. That Allah mentioned, there is there's different categories of people. Some people you give them a reminder, some people you call them with knowledge, some people you debate with them. Illa ladhina dhalamu minhum. Except those who transgress. Even those who transgress, you have to deal with them in, you have to deal with them with justice. Meaning, if he were, if he transgressed just in debating, he was getting a bit rude and so on, then be stanch with him, be, be strong with him. But doesn't mean you go and kill him. Doesn't mean that at all. So I hope that is clear. And inshallah, as I mentioned, if you want this book, then the brother will put the link uh, in the the in the channel, inshallah ta'ala, for uh, uh, to be uh, or to make it easier for everyone to get in contact with the uh, CC Dawah, uh, inshallah ta'ala. And we'll finish with this. Subhanakallah, bihamdik. أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك وصلى الله عن وصلى الله عن نبينا محمد على آله وصحبه أجمعين وسلم سليما كثيرا. Very interesting video. When we're talking about believers and unbelievers, I've always thought and said that it's really up to someone to believe what they want to believe. If today I came to you and I was preaching that um, Jesus is the prophet of God. It's my job to preach that message, but it's not my job to make you um, accept that. That's what many people don't understand. Just because you're not accepting that Jesus is the prophet of God doesn't mean that maybe you think Christianity is not the legit thing. It's really up to you. If you've gotten that message, it's your job to think about it if you want to. To look into it if you want to and find your answers if you want to but then they say curiosity killed the cat sometimes in life you have to be curious to find out things because there's many false things in the world so it's 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 really your choice to understand and believe what someone is saying or to not and i guess when people preach whatever they preach they have their own sort of proof while they have proof that okay god said this about jesus in the bible you're going to say no that doesn't make sense 
which is your choice totally so like i said it's really a choice and if someone provides you with proof when someone provides you with proof now uh, in a situation where you want to prove that theory that someone is providing you with as to how they got to that proof otherwise it's always yeah you have to be open-minded in this world very very open-minded if you want to learn anything otherwise make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video